Almighty with all our hearts. In this show, Let's Talk, every week we're going to talk about Islam and life, how to relate with other people and how to serve Allah. We'll have studio guests, we'll have a live studio audience, there'll be a, an email for you to write to, talk at huda.tv. So if you're looking for something different, looking for something that will make you think, maybe even touch your heart, this is the show for you. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam loved to stay in this cave and contemplate, look around him, and glorify Allah azza wa jal for his wonderful creations. But though he knew that his people were worshiping and following false idols, he did not have a clear path to tell him what to do and what not to do. We talked about his dreams that came through as truthful as the break of dawn. Prophet Muhammad, uh, peace and prayers be upon him, has no friend to go with him to the, this uh, Hira. Like many famous people, a lot of people know them, like them, and would like to sit with them as much as possible. But the Prophet wasallam, everybody liked him, yet he only liked to be alone with, with his Allah. Lord, with his Allah Azza wa Jal. And this was before being commissioned. But he felt that he had a higher purpose in life. Sitting with people would usually include chatting, talking about life, about women, about money, things that may stiffen your heart. But the Prophet ﷺ knew that he had to spend his time and utilize it in a far greater cause and purpose. I pen. think another reason for that is, is not to be said <coughs> later uh, that the Prophet ﷺ had that friend and he used to teach him so and so. So that might be a reason for not having friends or not selling with, sitting well, with well, people. Well, this allegation was said before by some of those claiming to be studying Islam. Orientalists. Orientals. They said that whatever the Prophet ﷺ brought was taken from the Gospels, from the Bibles. In one incident, they say, no, when he was 11 years old, traveling with Abu Talib to the Sham, they met a, they met a priest who was called Buhaira. They had uh, different uh, names, Jerjis, uh, or whatever. And he told Abu Talib that this man or this boy will be the messenger of uh, 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 in, in years to come. And the Orientals keep on saying that, well, there were uh, uh, two carpenters in Mecca who were Jews from Najran, from the south of Arabia, uh, who used to talk to the Prophet ﷺ and preach him, uh, to him and teach him what he later on came and, and, and claimed to be the Qur'an. And all of these allegations are a group of lies and nonsense, simply because a child that is 11 years old who met this priest for less than half an hour, would he be able to gather and compile all this perfection that he came with in the Qur'an? Definitely not. These carpenters who were from Najran and who were Jews, they themselves could not speak Arabic. And they knew the books which was in Hebrew. So how was it possible for them to translate it to Arabic and then the Prophet mm -hmm. rephrases that Teach into this perfection Prophet. of the Holy Qur'an? So all of these allegations or the Prophet uh, uh, getting this from the Jews and the Christians from the Bible it's nonsense the Prophet was illiterate والسلام, he could not read and write the Prophet والسلام, did not bring us something that was in the Bible itself 
there are so many things that the Bible does, does not contain, yet the Prophet Sallallahu brought us something astonishing. And above all, the Quran itself corrects so many misleading information in the Bible and telling us that these are contradictions, these are uh, uh, false information that has been altered and changed by the priests. So, the Prophet ﷺ was not influenced by anyone. And the claim that he loved to stay alone so that no one would influence him is unacceptable because no one can come with the things that the Prophet ﷺ came up with. This magnificence, this, this miracle that is until the Day of Judgment, which is the Qur'an. You have people, linguists, reading it and finding endless miracles. You have geologists, you have physicians, you have astronomers, you have all types of profession finding prophecies, finding scientific facts, though it is not a book of science. Yes. But this is the words of Allah Azza wa Jal. These are the words of Allah and whenever something comes to you from Allah, it has to be perfect. It has to be filled with knowledge that Wisdom. has no end. So this is not why he did not take anybody with him. It was simple that the Prophet Sallallahu simply loved to be alone to contemplate and think of this universe. In one night during the month of Ramadan, and it was of course Monday, the Prophet was as he was sitting in his cave, he was approached by the Archangel Gabriel, who came to him in uh, 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 the human form. And angels have different forms. They can take any form they wish. So, so he came to him in the form of a man. And it was in the middle of the night. It's a scary thing because you are sitting there on your own and all of a sudden this man appears in front of you at night. He embraced the Prophet ﷺ strongly to him until he could barely breathe. Then he let him go. And he said, read, iqra. And this can be also translated as proclaim proclaim or as recite recite the prophet sallallahu answered in three times as saying ma ana biqari which can, could mean i'm not going to read i just don't want to read and it also could read what um, I, I, i'm not a learned man i cannot read. Able to read i'm unable to read and it also could mean what should i read as a question and some scholars say that this is the sequence because Jabriel was telling him recite so in the beginning he said I'm not going to and then he told him recite so he said I am unable to because I cannot read and then he told him recite then the Prophet says what should I recite and then the Archangel Gabriel recited the first verses of the Qur'an to be revealed to our Prophet ﷺ, declaring his prophethood of him being a, a prophet. These verses uh, uh, translate to, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم, I seek refuge in Allah Azza wa Jal uh, from uh, uh, the Satan, بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم, in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful, the surah starts with, proclaim or recite in the name of your Lord and uh, uh, cherisher, who created. This is the first verse. Created man out of a mere clot of blood. Recite, and your Lord is the most bountiful. He who taught the use of the pen, taught man that which he knew not. So it's very simple, but very concise, very strong. The Prophet ﷺ came down from his cave, went straight home, trembling, shivering, and asking Khadija, may Allah be pleased with her, to put a cloth 
on him uh, so that he would feel warm and he, he was so afraid and Khadija was trying to calm him down. She told him, what's the matter? So the Prophet ﷺ told her that he was encountered with this man who told him so and so and so and he feels so afraid that Allah Azza wa he, he would have he was so afraid that he would have yani, died because of this of the amount of Shaykh, fear before going what <clears throat> happened after this revelation uh, can we uh, know some lessons can we take from this situation especially uh, the saying of Allah iqra recite the importance of reading mm -hmm. seeking knowledge on each Muslim or non-Muslim of course uh, Islam especially the first word revealed yes the, that's, 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 a, that's a very good note Islam is the religion of knowledge without knowledge you're not a good Muslim and the more you elevate in knowledge the more you're closer to Allah, Allah. the Almighty and that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says say verily those who know are not equal to those who do not know. So the more knowledge you have, the closer to you are to Allah Azza wa And we would like to point out something which is very critical and important, is that knowledge is divided into two. Knowledge of the Quran and the Sunnah and the sciences govern them, and knowledge that is not, such as geography, geology, uh, physics, and, and so on. Secular. It's, well, it's, not, it's not secular, but things that are not related to Islam. Mm -hmm. So the knowledge which is a must and more important than any other knowledge is the knowledge of religion and the sciences governing it. Also the, the other forms of knowledge are important if the good intention was present. But without good intention, they are like anything else. So we always direct people and especially in this verse where Allah says, recite. Recite what? Read. Read what? Definitely, Allah Azza wa Jal wants us to read the things that get us closer to Him. The sciences of the Quran, the sciences of the Sunnah, and the sciences governing the, the, the religions uh, as a whole. But from what you've said, that might be a call for people to concentrate on the religious knowledge, ignoring the, the other kind of knowledge. If people concentrated on religious uh, uh, knowledge, this would definitely lead them to study other forms of knowledge. Because in Islam, it tells us to exceed ourselves. It tells us to learn about the universe we live in, about the earth, so that we could prosper and walk in uh, the different paths of, the, of, of earth, gaining from its uh, 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 good things. So Islam tells you to pursue real, uh, uh, other sciences, but it does not tell you to start with it on uh, the account of the Islamic knowledge. You have to have the basic Islamic knowledge and afterwards you pursue the rest. And I believe that we should stop here and inshallah we will continue after uh, 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 we meet again next time. And until then, fi amanillah. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته